All right, so if you watch my Twitch, you probably know that I played this game, Metroid Prime Hunters. And, um, God, what a masterpiece. Anyway, so while playing Metroid, that just, that just started my turntable. I played Metroid Prime Hunters uh, on a DS emulator called Desmume. I hope that's the right pronunciation. And while playing it, you probably noticed that the top and bottom screen of the game that you're emulating is on the left and right hand side of the emulation. So because of that, you have the top screen on the left hand side and the touch screen on the right hand side. And while playing a DS game on a computer, you control the touch screen using your mouse. In most other DS titles, this isn't really a big deal because you can use the mouse to, let's say if it's Pokemon, select your moves, use the Poketech, do what you gotta do. However, Metroid Prime Hunters is a first person shooter and it's not like the previous Prime games where you can actually like, oh, I don't know, do the correct thing and target on your enemies while attacking them. It's like a normal first person shooter without any locking on. And the reason that they decided to make it this way is because the game was more of a multiplayer focused game. The single player, which is top tier five stars, masterpiece unfortunately suffered because of this however because i wanted to play it on stream and i wanted to try and be able to play the game fully with a keyboard and mouse i wanted to find a program that would properly utilize the mouse for the touchscreen and the reason that i need to do this is you probably noticed early on if you did watch that twitch stream that whenever the mouse would go off of the emulation window the emulator would actually stop registering the mouse which means let's say i was moving the mouse to the right to effectively move move my camera or what I was looking at to the right side, as soon as my mouse left the actual window, the emulator would no longer register my mouse and I would stop looking in that direction. I would then have to bring my mouse back over to the window to continue moving. This is annoying. So I tried finding a program that basically if you moved too far to the right, top, bottom, or to the left, it would reset the mouse position so you wouldn't have to worry about bringing the mouse back to the window. And unfortunately, the window itself didn't lock the mouse into place like it normally does with normal desktop first person shooters. There was no program that existed or at least none that I could find. If you know of a program that does exactly this, then please let me know because man, I wasted a lot of time doing this. Uh, but I decided to write a program that did exactly what I wanted to. And yes, before you ask, the program is available to download. I'm gonna try and put it in the description. I'm assuming it's gonna be like, I don't know, Mega or something like that. But anyway, let me show you how the program works. All right, so as we can see, Metroid Prime Hunters is being emulated in Desmume. The top screen is on the left-hand side and the touch screen is on the right-hand side. Basically how this works is if we hold left-click, move our mouse on the touch screen, and then move around, we can see that this basically counts as us touching the touch screen with a stylus. We can move around, shoot, all that fun stuff, but as soon as we move the mouse too far to the left, too far to the right, Metroid stops looking in that direction. And frankly, this is terrible. And that's why I wrote this program. When you actually download the program, it'll be in a folder only containing two things, program itself and a readme. If you double click on the program, a large command prompt looking window will kind of open up. You can minimize that. That's just for debugging and not necessary for interacting with the program. This window, very cute little window that I created is the program itself. And as we can see, it has a few buttons and I will quickly run through each of those. First things first is we're going to set the limits of the touch screen. And this is going to allow the program to understand what the range is for where we want the mouse to move. We're going to set the top limit, move our mouse over to where we want the top limit to be, and then just hit M to save that value. Same thing with the bottom limit, the left limit, and the right limit. Now that we have our limits, we can now specify a center point. The center point is basically where the mouse is going to snap back to once it leaves either the top, bottom, or left and right limits. Now, we do have an option to set this as auto because we can calculate the center point given those two coordinates, or we can actually create a custom center point. Unless you have a very specific use case, an auto center point is probably what most people are gonna wanna use, so that's what I'm gonna use here. And now we can start looping. As we can see, the mouse basically snaps into what is mathematically the center of the coordinates that you chose. And I don't even have to hold left click and I can simply move around. If I move too far to the right or the left or the top 
or the bottom, we can see that the mouse will snap back to the middle. There is a little pause that you're actually not looking around while this is happening, but frankly, it's really minute and doesn't affect me that much when I'm playing the game. If this is a deal breaker for you, you can like leave the video and dislike it, even though you can't actually see how many dislikes are on this video because that's really cool. But I played this entire game this way with a keyboard and mouse, and it honestly works much better than even using it on a DS because frankly, let's be real, that gave all of us carpal tunnel. So if you wanna stop using the program because the program actually does kind of hold your mouse hostage in this small area, you can pretty much just spam M. I don't know why clicking M or pressing M doesn't work when you just hit it once, you just kinda of have to hit it a bunch of times, but eventually it sets your mouse free and you're pretty much good to go. And if you wanna start looping again, you can just click the start looping button once again. Another cool function I've added into this program is being able to save and load configurations depending on, let's say, if you have multiple different games or multiple different use cases for this program. Instead of configuring it every single time you reboot the program, you can simply save the configuration. Let's save this one as Metroid. Hit save. Let's say I X out of the program. I have the program open back up. We can see that it creates a metroid.csv file. We can reopen the program, minimize this window, hit load config. We can see that all of the values are back to zero. We can open up that CSV file and now we have the configuration that we last used. And you can have practically infinite configurations for infinite different tasks you want this program to be used for. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Extremely helpful for this game. This program probably exists somewhere else, but I couldn't find it, so I just wrote it myself. So leave me alone. All right, so that was the program. I understand it's not perfect and there might already be some solutions out there. I personally haven't found any solutions regarding playing Metroid Prime Hunters with a keyboard and mouse. I have seen some solutions using controllers, but they don't seem as accurate as using a keyboard and mouse. And please, please use the program for yourself before you tell me to kill myself for making something bad. I appreciate it. Thank you for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope it was helpful. If you actually think that this program was helpful, please let me know in the comments down below. Make sure to follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and make sure to follow me on Twitch as well to see when I'm streaming because that's where I stream this game and I pretty much streamed the entire game using this program and it made it so much better. So I can personally say it made my life a whole lot easier and I hope it makes your life a lot easier too. All right, bye.